Leon Silvers III. Not a household name, but I'm here to tell you today that it should be. I'm absolutely sure you've heard some of his music somewhere, whether it was with the Silvers or Shalimar or the Whispers or Blackstreet or maybe Dr. Dre or Jay Dilla. Leon Silvers is a legendary music producer that got his start at a young age with his family group, the Silvers. Remember the song Boogie Fever? Yeah, that's them. His talents for writing and playing naturally put him on the radar of music promoter Dick Griffey. And in 1977, when Soul Train Records became Sound of Los Angeles Records, or Solar for short, Griffey hired Leon Silvers to be his in-house producer. He was suddenly writing songs, producing and playing on records for groups like Lakeside, Shalimar, and Dynasty. This was a very important time for black music. From the late 1970s and into the early 1980s, R&B music was desperately trying to separate itself from the sound of disco, which at that point was all over the place. Solar Records and Leon Silvers took an approach to create dance music that had a different sound than disco. When we think about a lot of disco music, we think of a tempo around 130 beats per minute. This is where Disco Inferno is by the Tramps. Burn, baby, burn. One of the main things they did at Solar Records was to slow that tempo down by about 15, 16 clicks. You still have a very danceable music, but instead of the emphasis on all four beats, the backbeat, two and four, now jump out at you. One, two, three, four. They call this sound boogie. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as L.A. Boogie, and boogie it did. Leon Silver's magic is all over this music, and it begins with his bass playing. First of all, he grew up a devout follower of the great James Jamerson of Motown fame, and you can hear it when you listen to his lines. Rhythmic, very syncopated at times, and very precise. Secondly, Leon Silver's wrote from the bass. We can hear it in these classic lines. They're the hooks to these songs. He talked about it in an interview a few years ago. I would use the bass as a harmonic to the melody that I would sing, always. I would use it as a keyboard. You can hear different chords as you listen to the melody and the bass. If I did a melody, I immediately went to the bass and did the harmonic bass line, because that was like my keyboard. And he got a signature sound. It was punchy, articulate, and mixed right up front. In a genre at the time that was mostly dominated by Fender basses and round wound strings, he played a Rickenbacker with flats. So, with Fender in hand, here are my top 10 favorite Leon Silvers III bass lines. This one is killing. The short notes in the first bar set up the craziness that happens in the second bar. And this is just a slice of the song. The bass parts on all the sections are incredible. Leon Silvers III is a genius at coming up with amazing parts to fit each section of the song. Also, dig that open A string that he keeps jumping down to. It's not supposed to work, but it sounds amazing. Jam. I love how Lucy sounds on this track. His fills are just perfect. We can really hear his Jamerson DNA coming through here and it bounces. Mm -hmm. 
Here's one from Dynasty and another Solar Records trademark. They snuck in a little funk on this one. One thing I really loved about breaking down all these bass lines is that they're all in different keys and some of them modulate to another key at the end of the song. His bass playing is the real deal. I could name that song in four notes. Now this one goes way back, pre-Boogie. Now, Leon Silvers didn't play bass on this track. It was probably Chuck Rainey or Wilton Felder, but he definitely wrote the bass line and the bass line drives the entire song. Again, it sounds like a James Jamerson tribute. You can clearly hear his influence on this one. This one is one of my favorites. The precision you have to have to pull this track off has a pretty high degree of difficulty. He's really getting in the cracks with those 16th note figures, and it just slays the whole track. I love this bass line. It's based off of 10th intervals on the bass. This is a really fun shape to play and sounds really good when you put it in the right place. He's making these major third shapes that follow the bass line. And even though there's no chordal instrument playing, we can clearly hear the harmony. This one's not boogie. I just really dig the tune. Let me say this. If you wanted to play bass in the 70s, your octave game better be on point. Leon Silvers is killing the octaves and the ghost notes, and he's sneaking in a pop at the end of the phrase. And if you've ever seen the video for this one, Leon is pulling off this line while singing and dancing and rocking a silk robe. Yes. For real, this was the hardest song for me to pull off on the list. It's not because of the syncopation, but the way that he jumps so quickly from finger style to popping is very difficult to do cleanly, and he makes it sound so easy. He's doing amazing kind of plucking accents throughout the song without necessarily slapping, and it's so cool. And he wrote this song, just like every other song on this list.
We all know this one, right? The bass line is the song. You can't sing this jam without singing that iconic bass line. This is another one where I could have picked any section of the song. Each part is brilliant. This one just bounces, and he sneaks in some nasty syncopation in the second bar of the phrase each time. Well played, Mr. Silvers. There are just too many great Leon Silvers bass lines to not leave out something. But I thought I had to include Fool's Paradise. It was the first single from the first Silvers album. And when you hear this song, it was clearly meant to frame this amazing bass line. favorite from the second Shalimar album. This bass line has everything. Short notes, long notes, and that amazing jump into the upper register to play the last bar. I love it and I never get tired of playing this one. Leon Silver's amazing run concluded at Solar Records. He went on to mentor two young up-and-coming producers named Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. He also went on to work with singer Gladys Knight and did projects with his son, Leon Silver's The Fourth. He's still active today as a producer as the next generation rediscovers his music through sampling. This is my little appreciation for Boogie and the great Leon Silvers III. You sang to us with your family group. You led us out of disco with Solar Records. And you carried the Jamerson torch into the 80s and beyond. You were Marcus before Marcus ever was. And I thank you for the amazing music that we still enjoy 40 some years later. Take that to the bank. What's your favorite Leon Silvers bass line? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you like all original jazz bass centric content coming at you as fast as I can make it, smash the subscribe button. You do not want to miss my next video. Until next time, take care of yourself and please love your neighbor.